Hello guys, this is Julia and today we are having the Pretty Pink Posh Block Hop release block hop for October 2016 and I want to introduce you to one of the new stamp sets and one of the new die sets as well. The stamp set is Giving Thanks and this is the Peekaboo Window die set and I will show you what you can do with it in, in just a moment, in just a few moments, sorry. I am starting out by stamping the leaves from the stamp set in different colors. The reason for using colors and not black ink is that I want to get as close as possible to the no line coloring technique and for that I, you know, black doesn't really work that well. I'm also using masks, uh, like to mask off some of the leaves, just to make sure that I can create the illusion of some of the leaves being behind others. Now for the coloring, uh, as I keep mentioning uh, ad nauseum, I learned all my, I'm still learning all my coloring from Kid and Clouder. I will link to them in the video description below. There's also a link on my blog in the sidebar. And the, the biggest takeaway from my um, coloring lessons there that I took is that you need to work in layers. You start out very lightly and then build up your colors layer by layer. If you go in and immediately apply a lot of pressure, you smooth out your paper and it can't take on any more of the pigment and then you just move stuff around and you can't blend very well. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm starting out with a very light layer and then I build up my color. Um, layer by layer. I'm working on Strasmore Bristol vellum paper. I also linked to it in the video description below. I always link to all the products in the video description below. So please, before you guys send me any emails asking about what supplies I use, please, please check the video description under the video or the product description on my blog. When you expand the video description, you will always find a link to my blog post at the very bottom. This is something that I wanted to address for quite a while because I do get a ton of questions about stuff that is either answered in the video or is linked to in the video description below or, and that is also linked in the video description, is answered on my FAQ on my blog. So if you have a question about which paper I prefer to use with pencils or which are my favorite inks or how do I blend with my pencils, etc. This is all stuff that I have answered in the FAQ on my blog because I get that question so often, it's easier just to put the information all out there. Now, as for the coloring here, I will not show you the entire coloring of each and every leaf. I'm just choosing three here to show you how I build up the color. Uh, you can see that bef uh, I'm leaving some of the areas white and I go in with my darkest pencil again and intensify the colors um, before I cover up, uh, cover up the white areas. The reason for that is that I want to make sure that my highlight is really very bright. Um, that to me that is a good way to ensure that I, there's going to be a lot of contrast you know, with the uh, lights and with the very dark areas. So I'm blending out from the darkest to the lighter areas, now applying more pressure than I did before. And I'm using small circular motions here to make sure that I get a nice even blend. And it doesn't look as smooth here on video as it does in real life, it's just because I had to, you know, um, work with the contrast settings here on the camera because otherwise it would have been too dark. You can see here I'm using a Prismacolor white pencil to blend those colors together and that I get a really nice and creamy finish. And that is basically the same that I'm going to do for this green leaf and then for the blue leaves etc. You can even experiment where you put your highlights. You don't even need to put it into the um, same place each and every time. I mean it's not a photograph, right? It doesn't have to be realistic as if you've taken a photograph. So if you're stressing out in your coloring because you don't know where the highlights go, just just color, you know, just get comfortable with your coloring first. And once you're comfortable with how to apply pressure and how to work in layers, then start worrying about light sources. Because if you try to do too much at once, you're just going to be frustrated and give up. And this is supposed to be a fun hobby. So just Focus on one thing like layering and uh, pressure. Once you've got that down and can you know do that in your sleep, then you can start worrying about light sources and you know just have fun. I mean, nobody says there's any wrong or right. Just have fun doing this, right? I mean, the recipient is not going to grade you on how well you figure out the light source. They're just going to be delighted that they get a handmade card from you. And this card actually took the better part of forever. So it took me like three or four hours to color this. But I decided this is like a coloring book, so what the heck? Um, 
I am using this die here. This is one of the largest. I think this is the largest die from the Picobo windows and it's going to cut up here and down here and in the middle, but at the sides it's just going to crease. So I can flip this open. Now I'm going to die cut into this coloration that I did. I was kind of freaked out about that, but look at this. Look at this. It's going to be a window that opens. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. It's so much fun. It's like you get the card and you're like, uh huh, okay, it's nice. And then hopefully you'll discover that there is so much more. So just using my pencil to trace the, uh, um, the outline here, I didn't want to bend the little doors back too much because I wanted them to close again for when I send out the card. Stamping the pumpkins here in orange ink, again using my masks to make sure that some pumpkins are behind others. And then I'm using the same technique again uh, by applying just a little bit of pressure, very, very, very light, literally very light pressure. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing in the colors and extending the colors a little bit further each time, going from dark to light. And I'm going over the previous color with the next color. You can see I'm not taking a lot of care here to make sure that uh, I, you don't see the card stuck through. This is all going to happen in later layers. And I really like the Strathmore paper here. Um, again, it's all linked in the video description below because I feel that it's very easy for me to blend on this paper. I like the Basil Marshmallow Heavy Card Shop cardstock is also a good paper, but I find this one to be even better, even though I'm constantly on the lookout for the perfect paper. Now I'm coming back here with my uh, second or third layer of color and, an and I'm applying much more pressure using small circular motions and blending these colors together. And you can see just how nicely these colors pop. And I'm not afraid to add very dark colors because when you have those very dark colors in the creases of the pumpkin, then they make the highlight shine even more. See, going, going over the previous colors here and then using my white to make sure I have a really nice and light highlight. And if you find that um, the because you went over the dark color with the lighter color, that the dark color has become too muted, just go over it again. Um, you can do that quite a few times. At some point, of course, uh, you're going to have smoothed out the structure of the paper, especially when you applied a lot of pressure. And that means that then it's going to be difficult to add more color. So that's why it's very important to work in layers. For the ground here, I'm just applying a little bit of pencil right here. Actually, I could have left it the way it is, but you know, I decided to blend it out a little bit further and I'm going to come back in later and blend this out even more. But for now, I just laid down some of the color here. And then for the background, I wanted to pick up the purple again that I have in the leaves on the front of the card. And so I'm grabbing the same purples that I used there and have to make sure that I'm going the right way because it's going to be dark from the top and light towards the bottom. So I shouldn't be covering over the light color with my darker ones. And you can see again, very light hand. I'm not pressing down a lot. It's just so I can get the color onto the paper. You can see also that I have my pencil tilted quite a bit. So it's the, the tip doesn't look down like at a 90 degree angle, but it's it has a very strong angle. So I can really just scribble lightly. I know it doesn't look pretty at all. Don't worry about this. That's not the point of it right now. I just want to get the color down first. Now that I have this, I am applying a little bit more pressure. In retrospect, I should have done a third layer of color, not just the second one, but also a third layer. Um, but I don't know why, I actually don't know why I didn't do it. Um, it was enough uh, for the technique that I'm doing here, but I should, I think it would have been even better if I would have done a third layer. Now you can see that still there's a lot of white peeking through, like a lot of the white cardstock is still peeking through. And since that is a really large background, I don't want to do the blending with my pencils only. I'm going to use a blending solution. It's easier on the hands and fingers. So if like me, you have trouble with your fingers or hands um, because of uh, an illness, uh, using a blending solution and a blending stump like I'm doing here might be a better way for you to blend. You can also do this on smaller images. And you can see here, it's very easy to blend out these colors on that cardstock and mix and mix them together nicely to get a smooth background. Uh, if I would have laid down another layer of color, I think the colors would have been more intense, but hey, I like it this way too. Since I didn't want to stamp the sentiment crooked, I'm using my Misty and Versafine ink. 
to stamp the sentiment, stamping it twice just to make sure it's nice and black. And then I'm using my Sharpie pen. Always start that Sharpie pen off the project because you have to push down on the tip to make it start and you can get a real mess on your project if you do this on your project. So finally I'm done. I am uh, put some foam, tim be foam tape behind this panel, putting this on top of my card base and look! You peek through and it says happy fall and you have lots of pumpkins here. Ah, oh, this is just so amazing. I love how this card turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed the project. Um, since this is a block hop and you're uh, watching this video while the hop is still going on, this is October 14th, uh, 2016. Um, you can hop over to my blog. The link is in the video description below because it's a block hop. So leave comments there on the blogs that participate and win amazing stuff. More info on that in my blog post. Here are some close-ups of the card. Here you can peek into those openings, into that peekaboo window and see my nice little pumpkins. And here are the leaves. I added some uh, white highlights here as well, just for additional interest. It wasn't really necessary, but I just like to do it. And here is the final card with these, the window slightly open. I tucked it back together. Uh, it was quite easy to do that actually. So I hope the recipient will figure this out and enjoy that card. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see some other fall themed cards, check out the shaker card for Pretty Pink Posh or that heat emboss resist for my favorite things. Thank you so much and catch you again soon. Bye bye.